Network, we had an election uh, where 55% of the membership voted for a new structure of Pacifica and were being opposed uh, uh, wrongly in court. Uh, we also have had an election on the KPFK board where uh, four people were knocked off and a lot of other questions that need to be raised. And the uh, Pacifica legal team has been suing people who uh, talk like this, so this is important to deal with. Jan and Jerry have devoted countless hours uh, to this fight and uh, they are to be uh, applauded. We desperately need the Pacifica network uh, yeah. to, to fight for us. And Jan and Jerry have been absolutely magnificent. They're being personally attacked. It's really wrong. Very important that we keep with them. And Jan, uh, thank you and Jerry for your work on the uh, Pacifica, on New Day Pacifica. So please talk to them about how to save this network. It's incredibly important and really difficult. I mean, really hard to understand what they're going through. I want to acknowledge Eileen Proctor. Eileen's work has been fabulous. She is the PR person of the actual left and uh, she's responsible for this event. I also want to acknowledge what an incredibly high powered group of people are standing in front of me. I mean, this, this is just truly the, the densest uh, a concentration of amazingly powerful activists, men are your magnificent Christian. I mean, it's just such an honor to have these great people with us. Um, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm really uh, blown away by this. So I hope you all are too and understand it. So this is a really rare event. The sun is shining, uh, you know, life is good. And we are really, really honored and blessed to be here. Mimi, you've stayed here through the, through the day. So we're gonna have Tatanka. Uh, Tatanka's gonna introduce Danny and Sarah. And then we'll have John and Julie and, and Libby and Peter and um, uh, others. Who else is on the list to speak for our, our round table? Uh, whoever else is, we'll get you. But I know you've all been waiting uh, for, for Danny and Sarah. Tatanka, uh, where, oh, here you are, <laughs> hiding in plain sight. Tatanka's gonna introduce these two great people and then we'll proceed with uh, with Julie and John and Peter and um, Nevi. Okay, go ahead, John. And, and thank you again, Jan and uh, Jerry, for hosting this and for all you do. Oh, oh, and Myla. Myla, you're also on the list to speak. Absolutely. We want you to come up and speak. And we need to give a... Myla has done this whole thing. It could not have happened with Myla. Every chair, every electron. We are still, by the way, on Zoom. But Myla reason is absolutely a pillar of activism and you will be hearing from her as well okay thank you so much go ahead to talk it for what for your shoes. oh my, my shoes <laughs> shoes for me okay <laughs> go for it to talk it thank you okay thank you so much i want to ask if someone will just let people know that within just a couple of minutes, the folks in back that Danny and Sarah are gonna be speaking because uh, this is the reason why a lot of us are here. Um, I'm gonna take two minutes. Let's just take a deep breath. Grateful for the sun preceding the rain. Thank God we have the sun today for us. We're grateful to the rain. A uh, couple of minutes of just acknowledging where we stand and then just about three minutes to introduce. So, you know, the El Camino was our, the indigenous people trail of tears here in California. I wrote some notes down. We gratefully travel through and gather today on occupied territory to, who to the best of our understanding, the Chumash and Hokan Chumash and speaking people, the Tongva, the Tavatian, the Serrano, the Shoshanian, and the Ahashian Utu Aztecan speakers and their homelands is where we are situated right here. And wherever you are traveling from or on Zoom, Zooming from on Turtle Island, we are grateful to the indigenous people that preceded us. And the wisdom that they carried that has not been listened to is what we need to hear now to save our planet for future generations. 
from many directions for Mother Earth, peace and freedom, remembering the example of Toy Farina, the California Joan of Arc. Through her pure resolve, sacrifice and persistence, she united Northern and Southern California. Spanish, Euro-Americans, Californios, and many villages, tribes during her short and brilliant life as a warrior woman, an Indian doctor, partera, curandera, and convert, albeit forced, to the mission system. So in the name of Toya Purana, the sacred standing rocks of Pinnacles, Moro, Nina, the San Gabriels, and the Pacific Palisades, where the window to the west of Turtle Island meets the great water of the Pacific, we call in the four directions to watch over what we do here today. Aho si se puede. So I come here as a partner with Danny and Sarah on something called the Circle of 100. We meet every Wednesday night at seven o'clock and you are welcome to join us. Circle of volunteers to assist Romero and the first major organizational partner with Romero, Dolores Huerta and the Dolores Huerta Foundation. We aim to be a force in California that creates something historic, which is what we need. I would suggest that like Mohandas Gandhi, when he wrote his autobiography, he called it my experiments with truth that each of us here are a personal experiment in truth and with truth. We're here to realize our personal and our collective cosmic sacred dream. That unites us together. The threat of the loss of our democracy and the, to end war, the, the threat, the ominous moment to moment threat of nuclear war our entire lives. And now the threat of the climate crisis one of the challenges of organizations like Romero and Dolores working on this is that usually to develop the relationships that allow the kind of power to come together takes some time, yes? And we don't have the time. We don't have the normal time. It is not normal last week for the North Pole to be 50 degrees above normal. It is not normal for the South Pole to be 70 degrees above normal. We feel that, those of us here feel that, and we know what that presages. We know what that means in the release of methane. We know what that means potentially to our current as potential freezing of the earth, all the horrors, the rising of the oceans, this may be the heaviest fire season we have here in California. Where we live in Northern California, we had four hours of rain in the last three months in the heart of winter. So we are here in a time of emergency. And what I want to convey in introducing Danny and Sarah is that these two people in their partnership with the Christic Institute in Washington, D.C. for over 20 years, and now in Santa Cruz with the Romero Institute for over 20 years, named after Archbishop Romero, assassinated by the CIA as he was giving Holy Communion for the poor people, is that these are people who have already demonstrated that their word is good, that they are effective, that they are trusted partners. I can't imagine our history without Danny showing up to defend Daniel Ellsberg as one of the key attorneys, you know, to, to defend the New York Times right to publish the Pentagon Papers. All the way through, yes, through the times of Watergate, through Karen Silkwood, one of our homegrown leaders and homegrown martyrs to try to to tell the truth, not just about the poisoning of herself and the atomic chemical workers and the Kermagee nuclear power plant, but the fissile materials being sent to Iran and to Israel. The Iran-Contra case, 
Few people have any idea the role they played. It would not have broken were it not for Danny and Sarah. And to do that and to do Karen, they needed to develop a powerful coalition, which is what we need to do in California. We need an historic coalition. So we are inviting you to participate in whatever way you can, not to deny what you're already doing. That is a part of it, because we all are facing climate change, right? And I want to suggest that you uh, contemplate right now and as you leave here that these two people have attracted the most important ally in her organization to work in partnership. I mean, joint training together, staff people working, the Romero Institute and the Dolores Huerta Foundation side by side. There are others that may join us as well. And that's the kind of coalition we need because there's several moving parts in Sacramento of allies that with us that are doing good work. And it's really part of something larger that will have an effect far beyond the bills that are going to be introduced this year, next year and the following year. So you are at the beginning and at the presence of two of the people that can change history for the better in all the issues that we've been talking about. When you're talking about election protection and climate change, there are two sides of the same coin, okay? When we're talking about our experiments in truth with non a nonviolent movement that we need to develop locally, statewide, and globally with our ancestors in the civil rights movement, I haven't seen that commitment since those days that brought us the 65 Civil Rights Act. And if we want it back, we need to develop that kind of unity, that kind of collaboration and partnership, that kind of music, that kind of spirit of inventive creativity to overcome all obstacles. And these two people embody that in their lives. So first, I'm gonna introduce Sarah Nelson who, with Annie, uh, create, created in, the Christic Institute and the Romero Institute. Sarah is a intellectual genius. She's an administrator um, that is <laughs> really amazing. And she's, along with Danny, but Sarah is the particular kind of glue that holds this all together. and nothing but love and respect for my dear friend, family member, Sarah Nelson. Welcome, Sarah. <laughs> my true love is going to make sure I don't I was supposed to have my knee replaced, but then there was COVID and, and nobody's doing surgery that you choose to do, right? Okay, good. Um, I, uh, there's a lot of amazing things that people have said today, and it's kind of hard to follow all of these wonderful speakers. And I, it's, they're so expressing what is in all of our hearts. They're just, saying what we all know is true. Um, and we all wish that we could work in detail on every single issue because we care about every single one. But each one of us is somewhat siloed. That doesn't mean that we can't come together and be an alliance for the vision for the future that we know is possible if we come together and work really hard and envision it and live it and make it happen. So that's what we're doing. And our focus has been, even though we've worked on many issues, we worked on nuclear, we've worked on African-American issues, on Hispanic issues and Latinx issues. We've worked on uh, the Iran Contra, all these issues. But now we're really focused on climate and we're very concerned about voting. So these two, these two issues are predominant in our lives. I want to say that I believe we are in an existential moment 
for the human experiment on planet Earth. And it's, it's existential in more than one way. First of all, we're losing species every week, all kinds of species. And Avaz put out the other day, last week, this incredible phrase when they were telling us about all the species that we're losing, they said, when the earth falls silent. Imagining that the day would come when there would not be a bird that you would hear or an insect that would buzz or a wolf that would howl, nothing. This is, this is totally existential and we know it's true. There's no question about the fact that it's true. And then we have the fact that we may not have any kind of real voting that expresses anything for the people in 2020. And now we're looking at possibly World War III. So let's just assume that we all decided to come here at this time, that we knew we were going to be the ones that we're gonna be dealing with these existential issues and we came ready to do it. So in Christic and in Romero, if there's one thing that has been underlying all of our work for 45 years, it's that we feel a responsibility to do everything we can to deal with injustice, to bring in more democratic institutions, more equity, fair economic system. It's not, we have to always understand that we have, we have a democratic republic and then we have an economic system. We can, you know, if they're not the, they're, you can put these things together in different ways. I studied anthropology. You can have, you could have a different kind of democracy. You can have a different kind of economic system. You can create these things. That's what human beings do. And Christian is right that what we have to do is we have to create now this, the political and economic system that we want for the future. And we know it doesn't look like the one we have right now. But it's up to us to do that. All right. Today I want to talk about a positive program that we have been involving for the last two years that is a piece that we believe is very strategic if we're going to try to get to carbon zero in California. We have goals right now in California that we are not going to meet. We're not meeting our goals. If, in order to get to our carbon goals, if we continue the way we are, it will take us until 2060. By that time, forget it. We're toast. So we have to go faster. We're completely out of time. This bill that we have been working on for the last two years has some strategic components in it to get us there faster. We're trying to get carbon zero in California in 10 years. We believe it's possible, but it's gonna take a lot of, there's a lot of moving parts and we've been experiencing all of them in the last year working on the legislative stuff. Wow, it's been a climb learning how this legislative process works in California. It's okay, we're on it every single day and we're figuring it out. The, the bill that we now have that is sponsored by Senator um, Monique Lamone in Santa Barbara and will soon be co-sponsored by Sydney Kamlager, this bill is going to do something very specific that has to be done if we have any hope at all of California actually continuing to lead in the world with climate and not completely fall behind. What we what we, what we always do is try to figure out, okay, what is it that the problem really is? And you cannot get to carbon zero with a few Teslas and another bunch of Priuses. You're not gonna get there. And that's what's been going on. So what, what this bill does is it says, we're gonna take the incentives for buying electric vehicles, because 40% of our, of our carbon in our state is transportation. It's the reason why we're falling behind in, all, in our goals. We're gonna take the incentives that go to buying electric vehicles and make them easily accessible by rearranging the entire website. There's four different incentive programs. It's complicated, it's crazy. We're gonna get it all into one website 
easy to apply for all four of them, and, and, and the money at the point of purchase, not later on your taxes. These things may sound simple, but they're critical. If we're gonna get this, you know, 70, 80% of the people participating in making the transition to a green world, and, and broaden this thing out and reach the low and moderate income people. Senator Lamone from Santa Barbara lives in a, a Hispanic community. There's not a single charger. So when we went to her with this bill, she said, well, this is what's happening to me. My husband and I have been talking about getting an electric vehicle, but there is no charger anywhere to be seen in our communities. So, okay, that's one piece. Another piece is to, of course, enhance the incentives and we're in alliance with another organization that's pushing forward on that uh, and thirdly there have to be labor standards and there have to be chargers put throughout the entire state you not only have to be able to get the vehicle you have to be able to charge it so so th this bill uh, it has been des is designed to make sure that chargers are going in all throughout the state, starting with the low and moderate, moderate income groups first, starting there, uh, and and moving it through and getting the infrastructure because you can't you can't get off of fossil fuels if you don't have another infrastructure, right? right? So so and you got you can't you can't you have to start now to figure out okay how many are we going to need in three years how many are we going to need in four years and start putting them in with goals and numbers and you have to do it with trained and skilled people. And they need to be trained by the IBEW, by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, so they, not, they, so they have jobs and, and careers for the rest of their lives because they get five years of apprenticeship training and they, they know how to do all kinds of things and not just put in the charger. So that begins to look like what we're all talking about when we talk about a Green New Deal. A Green New Deal is some changes in the economy that moves, moves money away from the elites and, and into the hands of the low and moderate income people and the middle class. So what we are trying to do in our legislative efforts is do something this year, next year, and the next year in three different parts that would be strategic components to get the carbon down and the money disseminated. And the, and the resources disseminated in a, in a more equitable way. Um, and so I have anyone who wants to talk with me or help by um, endorsing this legislation. We are now going into the process where we have to go through this committee and that committee and this committee and that committee. And one of the, th one of the things that's gonna be the most helpful is the amount of endorsements of other organizations or well-known people that are listed there as they go to the different committees. So I'm, as an organizer, I'm asking you, please, if your organization or your person uh, that you know that is, uh, is well known could endorse this bill, this is the moment. Because within a week, we're gonna be in front of one of these committees in, in the legislature. Um, we are so blessed to be doing this with Dolores Huerta. And we, and we open our arms to anyone that wants to be part of this alliance. We've got a three-year plan. We are going for the carbon zero number within 10 years. We are going for the equity. We are in determined to get there. Incidentally, the bill will also make money available for people to have e-bikes so that we can, it's not only vehicles, it's e-bikes so that, and you can have a three year free pass on public transportation. So if you are a working person, and so it gets people out of cars, it, it makes it possible for them to take public time. Now, we're working also with other allies that are doing other pieces. We, we support this, there's a new um, um, ballot initiative that is going to raise money for climate and that, that came out of Marin. We're in communication with them. We are for this. They've got half the signatures they need already to get it on, on the ballot. This is fantastic. So there's more pieces. The governor's budget is a piece, but we really have to stay focused. In three years in California, we could potentially have turned the corner and be headed another direction 
we would have something to offer other states and nations. We would be able to see the light and the way through, and it wouldn't all you know, look so dismal. We've, and that only we together can open up that doorway and follow the light right straight through. And so that, that is what we're doing. I, I wanna say one other thing about voting. We did with our Lakota People's Law Project last year, uh, we, we did, or two years ago, 2020, we had a fantastic program that was registering and, uh, and getting out the vote in the native communities. And the native, we, there was a big focus in Arizona, big focus in, in Georgia. We had people on the ground and everything. And those two places in Arizona, I, I mean, the New York, New York Times acknowledged that it was the native vote that, that pushed the win over in Arizona. And, uh, and of course, they've, they've now, Arizona's done all these horrible jerry things so that, so that the native vote is now divided up into three parts and, and it's all dominated by the whites. But the, but the fact of the matter is the native people are there and it could affect a Senate vote. So we just have to, you know, we're working also to figure out how it is we can do that again. Do what we did in 2020 by targeting with laser focus and working with Standing Rock and doing, we did 250,000 calls out to the native communities in targeted areas. So we, we do know how to do it and we plan to be at the table with everybody else who's in the fight between now and, and the 2022 election. So thank you very much for listening to me and Danny. Yeah, Thank you, Sarah. You can get in touch with this at greencal.org. That's the website for this, greencal.org. And we do need the endorsements of organizations urgently within the next week or two. We want to have hundreds. And so the four areas we've been targeting to start with, the environmental community, the environmental justice community, the labor community and the interfaith community, but any organization at all. I mean, I'm going after the Surfrider Foundation, you know, Varios Unidos, you know, any, any organization that's a community organization. So that's important. Also, for those of you that don't know, the work of Romero in recent decades has been Green Power and the other part is the Lakota People's Law Project. So Danny is the attorney for the Standing Rock folks that face the most difficult charges. Chase Iron Eyes, Madonna Thunderhawk, etc. Before I introduce you, Danny, whom I have uh, ultimate respect for, it's amazing to be on our, our Wednesday Zooms. Uh, recently, Danny said, uh, Dolores, I want you with me when in 2030 when we achieve our goals. And she said, okay. I'll be there. I was looking for a reason to stick around to, you know, 102. <laughs> so it's, it's just wonderful to see the respect of, of people who, like, you know, are each other's heroes working together. Hold on. I have an announcement. Uh, Alan Minsky and PDA had just endorsed this, and Mimi Kennedy has just endorsed it. As they say in Washington, mazel tov. Thank you, thank you, Mimi. Thank you, PDA and Alan. Oh, yeah. And we raised money for new shoes. For okay. yeah. I think I will read this. I woke up the other morning, this before I introduced Danny. Just wrote this down. Dawn, Father Earth stretches his arms, holding his lover, Mother Earth, yet one more day. Pachamama sighs. Another species dies. Her fever at the poles of her head and feet is equatorially torrid. She only longs to give life. In her uterus is an infant child. She has picked out its name. Humanity. Humanity rising. She prays the toxins she's been forced to breathe in, drink in, take in through her now mottled skin when her sacred push comes to toxic shove will not doom her child. Humanity from its chance at living yet seven more generations. 
She is aware of our efforts here today in this and scores of other sacred circles. We sisters and brothers, grandmothers and grandfathers, aunties and uncles of humanity's rising. She blesses our every gathering and sends her emanations in the form of new supporters so that we along with scores of others may prevail. Humanity is such a beautiful child, yearning to breathe free, swim in a pristine sea. Humanity awaits the verdict. Will all our relations rally soon enough with us fast enough to spare our mother Pachamama enough fresh air, enough pure food? The umbilicus that connects humanity rising to Gaia Pachamama is who we, the ancestors of this circle, are. Aho, si se puede. Danny and Spera inspire such poetry. Danny, take it away. All right, I just I just have a a, a couple of minutes here to uh, close on this issue of trying to get uh, everyone to get your organizations to support uh, Senate Bill One Two Three Zero. It's easy to remember uh, because there are going to be three different tranches here of legislation that we're going to be going for to get to zero carbon being emitted here in the state of California by 2030. It's extraordinarily important to understand how dramatic and radical this particular legislation is going to be. We're going to move the state of California to zero emissions of carbon by 2030. Uh, now people might say, this sounds extraordinary, you're not really going to be able to do it. Uh, the reason that I'm involved in this particular project here is because I decided that during the 100 years of life that I'm going to be hopefully blessed to get here in this incarnation, that I just can't stand sitting around watching things go on and not do everything that I can possibly do to stop them. That's why when, when the Vietnam War was going on and everybody was marching in the streets and demonstrating doing all the things that we had to do, that I said, wait a second, somebody's going to have to defend the New York Times and publish these papers. Uh, and I was the one who received the call from New York Times and Jim Goodell, the general counsel. He called me to represent the New York Times because I had been the one that initiated the, the, the uh, case that established the right of journalists to protect their confidential news sources in the United States. And I said that these are the kind of dramatic steps that need to be taken. And that's why when we realized everybody was trying to figure out how to stop the construction of nuclear power plants throughout the country, we decided to do this together uh, to stop the construction of all private nuclear power plants in the entire United States in the Karen Silkwood case. That's what we did. Sarah and I, Sarah was the labor secretary for the National Organization for Women under Ellie Smeal. Uh, and we joined together with the National Organization for Women and the United States Jesuit headquarters, uh, where I was general counsel in their social ministry office. Sarah and I are a wedding of the National Organization for Women and the major faith movements in the country to stop global power of, of nuclear power. Uh, we're the ones that stopped the smuggling of 98% pure bomb grade plutonium to Israel and Iran. Uh, at the same time. That, that's why we're involved here with the issue of climate change. What we're saying is, look, we can't all just sit around and pass these kind of platitudes of, oh, we ought to be able to get to uh, reduce uh, uh, carbon emissions by 2050. You know, I mean, we're all, the whole world is going to be collapsing by that time. You know, we've got to do something dramatic. We've got to get the state of California to zero emissions by 2030. We've got to put together an infrastructure that shows how this is done so that the rest of the states can follow and so the government of the United States can follow. This is the kind of thing that we need to get ready to do. When, when in fact, uh, when in fact uh, AOC finally runs for president and the progressive movement comes to power in the United States, we've got to do so without, without petroleum and without natural gas and without nuclear power. We've got to help save this planet uh, because the place is here in the United States 
that has caused these things, that has caused the nuclear weapons, has caused the nuclear power, has caused the massive climate change. We are responsible for these problems on our planet. We have to be responsible for turning this around. Uh, and we have to be confident that we can do this. We aren't going to nibble at the edges of this thing. We're going to have to mount a major social democratic revolution. And in order to do that, people have to vote. And people have to know why it's worth voting. I mean, let's come to grips with the fact that half of the people don't vote because they don't think there's a fucking thing they can do to change things. Okay, we've got to make that not true anymore. We've got to mobilize our people. We've got to present candidates. We've got to present statutes that will change the world. That's what we're here for today. That's what we're here for. We're, we're asking for your help to help mobilize the voting public in the United States and to show the rest of the world what democracy really looks like. But people have to have a reason to vote. They've got to have a reason to vote. The new generation of young people have to have a reason to vote. The Sunrise people have to have candidates to vote for. They have to have statutes to vote for. That's what we're here for today. We're all trying to help work to stop the suppression of the voting, to mobilize the people to vote, to help educate people as to what the issues are, and to, to show that we cannot be stopped by these right-wing reactionaries. That's why, in addition to our sponsoring Senate Bill 1230, the one, two, three steps to get to zero carbon emissions, we're also drafting a major federal criminal racketeering complaint against the six major oil corporations doing business in the state of California. These people are fucking criminals. Now, they have known for 50 years that their product is killing people and destroying the world. They have their own scientists inside their own companies that were telling them that our product is going to destroy the climate system of the planet. And we have to set up to a major project to lie to everybody, to deceive them into believing first that there's not even real climate, climate change, and then secondly, that their product doesn't have anything to do with it. This is a federal criminal fraud scheme that's going on. That's one of the predicate acts of the Federal Criminal Racketeering Act. So we're drafting a major federal criminal racketeering act complaint against these people, and we're not only going to demand the criminal prosecution of the corporations, we're going to demand the criminal prosecution of the CEOs of those companies, their management officials, their, their, and the funders, the, the principal financial institutions that are funding them when they know that they're criminals. That's what the criminal racketeering action looks like. You prosecute not only the mob bosses, but you prosecute their banks like Meyer Lansky and the National Bank of Miami that are funding them. That we're, the, the Christic Institute, now the Romero Institute, are known for this. You know, we don't mess around. You know, we're here going to get them by the juggler. That's what we're after right now. That's what we've got to do. And we've got to not only come out with a positive legislation to lift and elevate the conversation, we've got to put these people in jail. You know, we've got to shut down those corporations because they're not going to do it voluntarily. They're going to continue to try to finance every single elected official and bribe them into supporting them further. So you can't just keep fining them because they just pay the fines and take it off as a cost of doing business. These people have to go to prison. That's what has to happen here. And not only that, but the American Petroleum Institute, which is their major mouthpiece, has got to go to jail with them. You know, this is what we have to do. We have to understand that these people are evil, malignant people and that they don't care about our planet. They don't care about the poor. They don't care about the children, the future. This is what we're here for. And we're here to prosecute them just like we prosecuted the people that killed Karen Silkwood, just like we prosecuted the people in Iran-Contra. And we shut that operation down. We've shut down the, the nuclear power plant construction. We've shut down the supply of weapons to the Contras and we're gonna shut down the major oil corporations. We need your help to do this. We need to support the bill, S Senate Bill 1230, and we need the support of this. We're gonna be sending this criminal prosecution to the U.S. Attorney in the Northern District of California, Stephanie Hines, and we found the statute, Title 18, Section 3332, that mandates that a U.S. attorney presented with a federal complaint like this is duty-bound to present it to the grand jury. And we want a, a special grand jury impaneled to investigate the oil corporations in this, in this state and in this country. 
So that's what we're here to do. Uh, the, the, Christic, the Christic Institute is here, the Romero Institute is here, and we're still at work. So thank you very much for your support for today. Senate Bill 123, endorse it, get your organizations to support it, and let's shut these people down in California. Thank you.